today we're going to talk about hamartoma so what is a hamartoma the term hamartoma was coined by albrey in 1904 it is derived from the greek word hamartia which means fault or error it is a developmental malformation consisting of a tumor like overgrowth in which tissues of a particular part of the body are arranged disorderly or haphazardly so there can be more or one or more elements of that same site seen in the lesion so it is a developmental malformation which has a tumor like uh, presentation it is a disorganized mass composed of cells native to the organ or the site it grows along with its surroundings and the growth stops usually after adolescence so they basically benign lesions which are not encapsulated and have ill defined margins it may be associated with chromosomal abnormalities and syndromes like the cowden syndrome where there are multiple hamartomas cancer of the breast cancer of the thyroid cancer of the uterus hamartomas can occur at any site especially the lungs heart skin brain breast or other sites some common examples include the hemangioma neurofibroma nevus lymphangioma and glomus tumor the for reference on what these are they are available in in my videos on the same topic respectfully the difference between the hamartoma and the normal tissue basically the hamartomas grow in a disorganized mass while the normal tissue in the same site will be seen having the normal pattern over there now another term which we must know is the choristoma it is a mass composed of normal cells but in a foreign location so you have to think of pancreatic tissue in a location like the stomach so what are the clinical features of a hamartoma so it is a developmental malformation that may present at birth or they may manifest in the early years of childhood may be single or multiple it may regress spontaneously especially in the case of hemangioma it may not cause any symptoms but it may cause discomfort by pressure on the adjacent structures or tissue it depends on the size and the site of the lesion for example a pulmonary hematoma may be asymptomatic or it may present with an airway obstruction or a pneumonia a heart hematoma may present as heart failure a kidney hematoma may be asymptomatic or may present as renal dysfunction a breast hematoma may present as a breast lump a splenic hematoma may present as abdominal pain So this is a hemangioma which is an example of hamartoma this is a splenic hamartoma you can see the size of the lesion so what are the investigations so investigations whether to investigate or not depends on whether it is uh, seen as an incidental finding and do you want to go for further studies or it is coming with symptoms and you have found the lesion and you want to further investigate So in the case of a pulmonary hematoma a CT thorax may reveal popcorn calcification. In the case of breast hematoma you can do a mammography or a mammosonogram and the same and the lesion features can be seen. For a heart hematoma like a cardiac rhabdomyoma an echocardiography will be sufficient. For liver hemangiomas or renal hemangiomas or splenic hematomas an ultrasound and later on for further investigation a CCT of the abdomen can be done. if the lesion is external an fnac can be attempted so this is a chest x ray showing a pulmonary hematoma you can see the lesion here this is a mammogram which shows the breast hematoma so what is the treatment so depending on whether it is symptomatic or not whether investigation was done or not treatment can be suggested 
So treatment largely depends on the location of the tumor and whether or not it is causing symptoms. And the treatment, whenever decided, is surgical removal of the hematoma when indicated. So that's a briefly about the term hamartoma. Now individually we will be discussing about the different types of hamartomas based on like hemangioma, neurofibroma, such things will be dealt with at separate topics. Thank you.